Hi, this is Mark Rosen from WCCO-TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend, Ron Henderson, the Fitness King, presenting Motivation, one word to help change your life. Now, folks, if you're as old as me, you probably remember that tune. Yes, I grew up watching Lassie. That's right, that's kind of the music to the theme song. I'm excited about today's show. As my guest, I have Joanne Nevion. Yes. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank Welcome you. To thank you. I have her on because guess what she does for a living? Yes, right. She she might back in those days, she might even been the person that actually trained Lassie. All right. She has a company called Pack Leader Behavior and Training. And she trains dogs, and I wanted her to come on today because there's so many people out there, you know, that have animals, especially dogs, and the dogs are supposed to be a man's best friend. But if they're not trained right, you kind of wonder about that, okay? So I want to talk to you about that. How long have you, been, how long have you actually been in the business of training dogs? Uh, for about 20 years now. Okay. Um, I started out small. I started out going to people's homes and helping them with little problems. And then I got into bigger cases. I finally opened a training center. Okay. And I'm going to slow you down just a little bit. How did you, when you say that you started at people's homes, what actually, John, what pulled you into that direction, first of all? You know? Well, like you said, if they're not properly trained, mm -hmm. People have issues, then people get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Then dogs end up in shelters. Right. It, it's just, it's a miserable life for the dog. Right. And if the owners don't give them up, it's a miserable life for both. Right. So it's a win-win on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that got me into it is the safety of people, especially kids, mm -hmm. with bites. Yep. Uh, it seems that mm -hmm. bites are on the rise. People blame it on certain mm -hmm. breeds. but. If we train our dogs and we understand dogs, that potential goes way down, and I wanted to impact that as well. Right. Okay. So how many years has that been? But since I've been training, yeah, training. 20 years. Wow. Wow, it's a long time. 20 years. It's been a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> it's been has it been a fun journey? It has been. It's been, I never stopped learning. The dogs never stopped teaching me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I learn things new every day. I love when I see both a dog and an owner's lights go on. Right. You know, when you say, they got it! Right. And, and you just go for the gusto. It's it's wonderful. Okay. It, I never stop enjoying it. Wow. And, I, and I, I would assume you probably have dogs yourself. I do. How I have four of them. Four? Wow. Yep. What kind of dogs do you have? Well, they're all the right. little ones. You know, a great 150-pound Great Dane <laughs> okay. and a 100-pound German Shepherd and wow. um, a Briard, which many people don't know about. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a herding and protection breed from France that was almost extinct. They brought them wow. back during the war to help them with the war effort. Mm -hmm. um, and then my old girl is almost 16 years old, and she's a Lab Australian Shepherd. Wow, wow. Yeah. A Briard, too. By, do you have pictures of those dogs? I do. Uh, send those to me. I'd like to show them to the audience as well. Absolutely. I, I like this. A Briard. A Bri is that like French? It is from the Brie region in France. Okay. Bri how do you say? Briard. Yeah. Briard. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let me ask you this. What, what is probably the most, or one of the most important skills that you think is important for a dog trainer to have? Just in your opinion. In my opinion, it depends. If you're training the dog, mm -hmm. it's a good sense of reading ability, how you can right. read the dog's body language, how you can understand what they're telling you. Absolutely critical. So dog language. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and how do you, how do you, I, I'm going to interrupt you because, Joanne, this is, this is something that's important to me because we've been debating on whether to get a dog or not, folks. That's right. Okay? You want one. Yeah, we want a dog. You do want one. <laughs> we're, we're, we're debating on it. So how do you, I mean, how the dog's language, I, how do you even know what it is? There's been lots of studies and there's been lots of fallacies about it too. Um, how they carry, it's, it's not one individual component. For example, many people think that if a dog wags their tail, they're happy. Right, exactly. That's mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true. The dog's tail wag is just a level of excitement. Okay. How they mm -hmm. hold their tail in the rest of their body will tell you, are they happy? Are they just excited? Yeah. Are they upset? Are they out and out mad? Mm -hmm. So you have to well, learn all those nuances mm -hmm. and you take the dog as a whole. His ears, his stance, his mm -hmm. tail, his mouth. Did you know that a dog can has the same muscles in their forehead that we do? Mm -hmm. And when, they, when you see a furrowed brow, yeah, it's the same as what it's we the do. Same, really. Absolutely. So yeah. you learn all these nuances of what a two-second freeze means. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if a dog freezes for two seconds, it's probably not going to be good at second number three. Right, right. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you learn all of those, and it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Okay. And you said, and you said, Joanne, you said you're still learning. I, I, every day. Hmm. Every day. Well, the field, it's amazing. Since, the, since we came out of World War II, <clears throat> excuse me, we had all these people who trained dogs during the war. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were going to send dogs into war. Yep. Mm -hmm. They didn't care if they came out the other side because they mm -hmm. likely weren't. Right. So they used all these aversive training methods because mm -hmm. they didn't care what the long-term effects right. were. Mm -hmm. After the war in the 60s, 60s around, Change 50s, mm -hmm. 60s, um, we got people who wanted to have long-term better relationships and better effects. Mm -hmm. You can train a dog by ch putting a choke chain on, and right. you can do that, and it will work. Mm -hmm. They will always come around the other side. Mm -hmm. For example, if I hit you every time you did something, right. you may not like me so much by the end of this interview. Right. Okay, so it's going to show up somewhere else. So we learned all these things about dogs, um, and, and it just keeps building on itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Where does this passion come from? Where does it come from? Oh. And the reason I'm asking this, was it something in your childhood? It, you know, where does it come from? I've always been an animal freak. <laughs> okay. Always. An always. animal freak! Oh, yeah. animal, now, now wait a minute now. Yeah. Let's, that's, let's, what you, that's what she said, I did, I did say it. I did say it. <laughs> okay. I love your energy. I, I'm, yeah. on, I'm on tape saying that. Okay. Joanne, I love your energy. <laughs> Um, it started, I've always loved animals, always, mm -hmm. always, always. When I was younger, I, my very, one of my very first jobs was for the New York Zoological Society mm -hmm. in the New York Aquarium. Okay. Um, I was worked a lot with the, the, the marine mammals, so yep. the training and the learning started there. Okay. Uh, and it's just, it mm -hmm. picked up since then. Interesting, interesting. I've loved animals, obviously. I was whistling the Lassie uh, theme song, but I remember uh, Rin Tin Tin. Uh, you have Scooby Dooby Doo. I have a bunch of them here: uh, Beethoven, uh, Benji, Eddie, Old Yeller. Oh yeah. You know, and I've had probably five dogs, and I love animals. And the problem that I had for me as an individual was, I cared about them, and I felt like I didn't have enough time to spend with them because I start work so early. Yeah. It, I didn't think it was fair to them. Well, it's not when you start; it's how you fit them into your life. Mm -hmm. If you want it, it, it is a commitment. Whenever you get an animal into your life, it's right. just like you're getting a child into Thank your you. life. Thank you. It's a commitment. You Thank don't you. go to the pound and get yep. a dog and mm -hmm. say, we'll see. Yes. You're looking at a 15-year commitment. Yes. I mean, and you have to put it in. If you wanted to, you, some activities you might like, some people like to run. Right. You know, so they're going to go get a Rhodesian Ridgeback or a Border Collie right. or something that they can fit into what they like. Right. so that they're both enjoying the same things. Right. And let me ask you this question. Uh, as, as somebody that's skilled at what you do as a trainer, uh, do, you, do you also, do you make it available for people that are saying, hey, I'm thinking about getting a dog, can they call you and ask you and ask for recommendations even for that? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And what I, what I tell people, um, if they're going to the pound, if they're not sure, I will offer to go with them to do a good match. That's but nice. before they ever go get a dog, mm -hmm. They've got to put out their priorities because you're going to fall in, I guarantee you're going to fall in love with the puppy eyes. Sure, I know. And you're not going to pay attention to the important things. So do you like shedding? Do you care about it? I hate shedding. Okay, well, that, that puts a whole lot of dogs but out I of reach. But I still love Malamus. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, really that's, good. Not, a, that's <laughs> not a good I know. match. I know. <laughs> Drooling, yeah. activity level, size. Right. Um, you know, all those things, you have to take all your priorities into account. Mm -hmm. Temperament. Do you want a dog that's friendly with dogs? Don't you care? Right. Do you want a dog for protection? And I don't mean attack dogs. Sure. I mean a dog that sure. people are going to look and say, okay, I'm not going to go near that person. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, what are your needs and what can you accommodate and as far as what you can give? Now, there are some dogs like my Great Dane, mm -hmm. love him to death. Sheds like crazy, mm -hmm. which is annoying because they're these little needle hairs that yep, yep. never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but he only needs six minutes of exercise a day. Wow. Uh, it's exaggeration, but mm -hmm. very little so compared very to little, my German Shepherd, little. which has to be on the road run constantly. Always. So you have to know what's going to fit into your life. Right, right. Folks at home, I know you're thinking, he's done it again. He's brought us another fabulous guest on. Yes, I'm sorry. I just know how to find great guests. This is really, this information is very... It's, it's, it's stuff that people need to know. Yes. Things I never thought about, by the way. 
Okay, things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> I remember I was saying, oh, you should do that. Okay? Yes, oh, yeah. I remember. But this is really good. These are things I have to, and I'm, I'm going over and going over because these are things that people never think about, and that's really, really important, okay? Well, let me give you another really yes, important. Please do. 77% of all dog bites happen with dogs people know. Okay. Either in their home or a close connection with. Okay, I didn't know that either. Seventy-seven percent. That's an and most bites happen with children. Mm -hmm. That's an atrocious statistic. That's huge. That's atrocious, mm -hmm. and that's that's one of my main focuses, especially with children. And we, that gets back to the everything ties right oh, back right, around. Right, right, right. This gets back to the communication. How do you know that the dog wants to meet you? How do you know how to approach a dog? Right. Those types of things. And how do you know? Well, to be honest with you, the way we all do it, you know, you go, you put your hand up sure, in his face. Right. Bit, How would you like it? Right, right. Uh, that's not a very good I way. I would do it that way. No, no. You, you, you wait till the dog approaches yeah. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wait till they say, okay, I want to meet you. Right. And if you, you know some simple body language things, like the, their mouth, their t did you, licking lips is a sign of stress. Mm -hmm. Yawning is a sign of stress. See, now people, we have whites in our eyes. Sure. See them normally. Well, I yawn because I get up early. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm about to yawn now. Oh, oh don't do that. That's contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I get up so early every morning. I know. I know. So, so things like that and, and those mm -hmm. types of things help keep people safe. And I want people to understand those things. Wow. Well, you ever worry about getting, uh, Joanne, you ever worry about getting bitten yourself? I don't worry about it. Okay. Um, and it doesn't happen. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It doesn't happen often because I... Thankfully, know what I'm doing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I've had two bites, two mm -hmm. two dogs bite me in my whole career. Okay, same day too, right? No, no, thank God, no, 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 <laughs> no. One was was pretty severe. Um, luckily, no scars, and the other one was, you know, just little bites on the leg. Mm -hmm. But um, again, I I can read the signs, and dogs also not only have signs to tell you what they're going to do, mm -hmm. they have signs to calm each other down. So yep. if I know those signs, I can give that sign to a dog and help it relax a little All bit. Right. Well, it definitely sounds good. Let me ask you this. What, surface, what services do you guys offer? What services do we offer? We offer a myriad of services. Yep. Our basic bread and butter mm -hmm. is, our in, is our center um, dog training, which mm -hmm. is for dogs of all ages from eight weeks on up. So that's your basic socialization, your basic um, obedience. So it's eight weeks, thing. you can train them in eight weeks. I, I want them, if I could get every puppy in between eight and ten weeks, mm -hmm. I would not have to train puppies after that. Wow. That is that is such, between birth and 12 weeks old is a critical period for dogs. Wow. So critical. And I'm sending this to a couple of my clients. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's absolutely <laughs> critical. If you have a dog between... Mm -hmm. Eight weeks, I, you, most people get their dogs in eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Between eight and 12 weeks, get it into a good puppy mm -hmm. class as yeah. soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now that puppy class shouldn't be sit down, stay. Right. That's not what puppies need. Mm -hmm. Puppies need to know bite inhibition, how hard they can bite. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a puppy not to bite because they need there to. Need they to need to. Yeah. They need to so they learn how hard they can bite because one day, a vet's going to touch it wrong, or it's going to be hurt, and somebody's mm -hmm. going to help it, and they're going to bite. Yes. That's the only thing they have. They can't slap you. Right, they right, can't. Right. <laughs> so they're going to bite, and they have to know how hard they can yeah. bite to warn and not do damage. Mm -hmm. um, they need to learn socialization with people, other dogs, and the environment, mm -hmm. so that you don't have a dog flipping out on sure. the 4th of July yeah, or yeah, things yeah. like that. That is the most critical time there is for a dog. Okay, great, great. How important is training? You know, if you say like a scale of one to ten, how important is it really? Eleven. Okay. Now that does not mean if you're skilled in dog communication and things that you can't do it at home. Mm -hmm. But even if you're doing nothing, you're training your dog. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you when your dog barks and you can't stand it anymore and you give it what you want. You're teaching him, I'll give you what you want oh, if you yeah. make a lot oh, of noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like you're, baby. you're training it oh, yeah. whether you like it or not. You mm -hmm. might as well come to somebody who knows what they're doing to help you train it the right way. Right. And let, let me segue into this. Is it better not to give him when he's barking in like that, give him that little creep then? Yes. So mm -hmm. Yes. What you, what you want to do is find out what the dog likes mm 
and use those for rewards for doing what you want, right. not to tell them what not to do. Right. Okay. So actually with one of my, my, my 16 year old, now she's wonderful now, I'll tell her, Coco, I've got this, don't worry about it, and she'll shut up and go lay down. Yeah. She's um, 16? She is 16. Oh wow. Yeah, wow. she's, ama she's an amazing, she's my nursemaid. She will take care of any injury any animal or person has. She just watches out for everybody. Wow. Wow. Um, but there was a time that she was a barker. If she wanted something, she would sit there and bark. Mm -hmm. And I actually would put a pillow between my eyes and her eyes. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, I guess I'm not sick getting. Right, getting through it. And, and she went and lay down. The minute she went and lay mm -hmm. down and got, was quiet, I would give her something that she wanted. So she figured it out. Sure. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> what are, well, let me ask you this. What are, what are the most common mistakes that people do make with their dogs? You know, let's give me a couple. Not sticking to rules. Mm -hmm. When you make a rule, you stick to a rule. Mm -hmm. So rules are that important? They are. They are for a couple of reasons. Um, if you have kids, your kids follow rules. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You know, um, Dogs need rules to figure out where they are in the world. And I'm not saying level of pack. I'm right. just saying to live in a community, sure. they need rules. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that rules are important for is because dogs need to feel protected by you, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Right. Mm -hmm. If they feel you're not strong enough to set their rules, mm -hmm. they're not gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna rise up and protect you. So they're going to be very uneasy in that role. Sure. Even the most demure dog really? will rise to that role if they think you don't have it. So by wow. setting rules, they say, okay, I can relax now. I've had, I had a customer, a huge Mastiff, mm -hmm. um, came through puppy class, okay, kind of mm -hmm. late. At two years old, and it's always, if you don't get those first 12 weeks, sure. you always see the problems right. at two Later. years old. Yep, yep. She came to me, my dog is rushing people, she's scaring people, she's mm -hmm. just... I went in and they had the, the, the nicest, most easygoing man and woman owning this dog. Sure. I said, you yes. gotta stop. Mm -hmm. You have to it's stop. Really and I put rules in place and mm -hmm. we did this. She called me after about three weeks and said, you won't believe this. She's playing again like a puppy. Really? She was able to relax sure. and play and be, her, be a puppy instead of I have to protect everything. Wow. And how old was her dog? The dog was a little over two. Okay, because that, that was my next question. Are, is, there, is, there, is there ever an age where a dog is too old for training? No. No. Just like us, they, can, just like us, it, they learn quicker when they're younger. Mm -hmm. But as long as you can find that motivating factor, they can learn with anything. Right. And if somebody was, you know, somebody watching the show right now is interested in actually getting a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, my website is packleaderbehavior.com. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Facebook page, Pack Leader Behavior. Um, and you know, I'm sure you'll have contact information. Right, yes, 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 yes. But I always like, because sometimes, sometimes people like to hear it, sometimes they like to read it. Sure. That's why, so. Yep. Okay. And I, I, I am willing to do almost anything to help a dog and an owner mm -hmm. be happy together. That's, that's the main deal. Right. Sounds good. What are some of the most common issues that, you, that dogs have far as when it comes to training them? Uh, for the younger dogs, it's nipping and mm -hmm. biting. So nipping and biting. Uh, potty training. Now that's best for actually because that's, thank you for saying that one because I had a, I had a, a, a what do you call it, a lab. Mm -hmm. I had a black lab and Kasha, I, I'm working literally like 12 hours. I come home, Kasha, beautiful Kasha, beautiful dog, so excited to see me. Runs out of the door, right? And all the way out, she's peeing. She's peeing. And I've never heard of that before. Take her back and she's still peeing because she's so excited to see me. Yeah. How do you stop that? How do you get the dog to stop doing that? Those, you get that excited? That can happen for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Either the one you described is overly excited. Right. The, other, the other thing mm -hmm. is overly submissive. Mm -hmm. For the overly excited, you need to tone down the excitement. Mm -hmm. So you go in very low key, you go in very quiet, you don't even greet the dog until you let them out and they're calmed down. Wow. You just, just, everything is nice and calm. <laughs> okay. You know, well, you open the door and she's peeing right now. <laughs> I know, it takes a while. It takes mm -hmm. quite a while. For the submissive, mm -hmm. you want to do that plus give them things to give them self-confidence. Yeah. Obedience training, yeah. agility yeah. training, those types of things help boost the, the confidence. Right, right. 
Are there any tips, okay, because some people maybe they're watching right now, they're thinking, hey, you know what, I'd like to maybe call her, but right now it's not really good timing, so they're maybe looking for some, are there any tips that you could give the person at home right now that, things that might help them in sure. helping their, with their dog training? Sure. Um, one of the, and this is, this is going to sound a little funny, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple. Number one, find out what your dog likes. Mm -hmm. um, most dogs hate to be pet on the head. Most dogs hate to be hugged. Mm -hmm. Most dogs wow. hate to have your face near their face. And wow. this is all the things we as humans think is the best. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Most dogs don't like to be looked square in the eye. Yes, yes. So yes. find out what your dog likes mm -hmm. so that you can, you can tell them in their language what they like. Mm -hmm. um, second, rules. Set down rules. Mm -hmm. Follow your rules. Don't mm -hmm. be mean. But the, my, my, you know, it's my main pack leader behavior came off of uh, a flourish of um, following for other trainers. Okay. okay. It doesn't mean you're the bully of what you say goes. It's what I mean is a true leader. Right. A true, confident, calm leader that mm -hmm. will take yeah. you anywhere you need to go. That's what I mean by pack leader. Okay. Um, be that for your dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And lastly... Play with your dog. Play with them constantly. Mm -hmm. um, a thing like playing fetch, a thing like yes. playing hide and seek. Mm -hmm. Hide treats around the house. Mm -hmm. um, we play a game where you just throw a tree out and say, go find it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just out, 10 feet. Sure, sure. What happens when you do that? The dog comes back. Mm -hmm. It always comes back. Mm -hmm. You're now starting to teach recall. Right, okay. Go find it, come back, go find it, mm -hmm. come back. Now you're mm -hmm. getting an affinity into yourself. Okay. For recall, and that's one of the big things. My dog doesn't come back. Well, they don't have a home button. <laughs> they don't automatically come home. They right. have to learn these things. Wow. wow, wow. And don't get frustrated. If you get frustrated with your dog, it's going to feed down to the dog and go counter mm -hmm. to what you want to do. Wow, wow. Folks at home, if my wife Donna gets mad at me because I come home with the dog, it's her fault. I'll take you home go find one. <laughs> Because she really wants a dog, and I have a disabled a stepdaughter that, uh, that would be good for her as well. But we're like right on the, and then the people that I do know that have dogs, their dogs are keeping them up all night because the dogs aren't trained, and I'm like, you need to take your dog to train her. Yeah. yeah. And we, we do, one, one of the things that's nice, if you mm -hmm. can't make it to class, yep. I will come to you. Wow. So let me know. Mm -hmm. You know, you get, we'll help, we'll pick mm -hmm. out a dog, I'll come and... That's great. That's great. You got it, folks. You heard it. You heard it say. Okay. Now, do you guys offer any certifications too for people? You know, we do. Yeah. We do. We offer all the AKC certifications mm -hmm. for, um, and it's not just pure breeds. It's the Star Puppy, which okay. is the, the dogs under a year, the Canine Good Citizenship, Advanced Canine Good Citizenship, mm -hmm. Urban Citizenship. Mm -hmm. We also offer... Urban, what's urban? Ur is <laughs> it's, it's basically you have to take the test in a large urban area. So okay. going up an elevator, going up a large staircase, taking them into stores. Oh, good point. Yes. For, your, for your dogs to get them socialized, and it, this is, they're going to love me for this, Home Depot and Lowe's will let you take your dogs into the store. Wow. Get them in there, get them socialized with, grocery, mm. with shopping carts and things like mm. that. Wow. So wow. That, that's what they mean by urban. Okay. And when, when I had a dog before that had probably, I'd say half the stuff was in red. It was supposed to be like a champion dog. How, okay. do, they, how do they get those markings? Like, I don't know. How do they get that? How do they become a champion dog? Well, it depends on what you're championing. Right, you right. could be confirmation, which is just your physical stature. Mm -hmm. You could be obedience, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that, you know, if I raised my, one of my dogs that I used to have, I could raise my eyebrows and it was a command for her right. and she'd know what to do. Mm -hmm. It could be an agility. Mm -hmm. And you work up, most of those start out very low level. Very low. Mm -hmm. um, we cover quite a bit of that in my classes, as well as offering to get you to those upper level wow. things. When are you guys open? What are your hours, typically speaking? I'm typically open all the time. Um, I am only at the training center when I have classes, mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evenings, Saturdays, and Sundays. Okay. okay. <laughs> and do you do, because uh, I, from an educational standpoint, do you do seminars for like groups of people? Too, I if they want, do. You know? I do. One of my biggest and best is the canine communication. Okay. And what's that about? It teaches the dog body language that we spoke okay. about earlier. Okay. How do you know when? Um, right. we, we give you all kinds of scenarios. Mm -hmm. Uh, depending on the situation, I will actually bring a dog in mm -hmm. 
and I do that for all ages, from four years old all the way up to adult. I have different seminars for different wow. different age groups. And you bring your own dogs in for that? I do. Okay. You ever have a dog, uh, you know, I've seen an American's talent, the dog doesn't do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Does that ever happen at your well, seminar? Well, of course! <laughs> of course! <laughs> and I'm telling stories I'm going to regret, mm -hmm. but one of, actually this was probably my best temperament dog I've had. This okay. dog could take an angry dog mm -hmm. from coming in wanting to kill her to best friends in an hour. Wow. She was amazing and mm -hmm. I couldn't do what I did sometimes without her. Mm -hmm. But I had her in class yeah. mm -hmm. and I had forgotten that she had needs like every dog has. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing in front mm -hmm. of a class and doing yeah. her thing and she'd been through three or four classes mm -hmm. next thing I know all she peed all over my shoes. And okay. I'm like, Okay. Owner's fault! <laughs> and you clean it up and you just go on. Right, so it happens, yeah. So there, it was, like, was that like one of your worst nightmares or whatever? Yeah, no, you though. blow things like that off. Uh -huh. they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, people make mistakes, dogs do things. They're, they're not perfect little robots. They're animals. Right. right. You have to, you, you, you understand and appreciate that or... Right. What would be, if you were going to give me one of your most, let's say, your... I mean, I'm sure you have a tons of these, but give me a success story of somebody that was maybe came in that they didn't thought they were going to be able to train their dog, and oh. they walked out there like, Joanne, Joanne, Joanne. They were like your best buddy because of what you've done for them. I honestly, I, I hate to say it, but I do, have a, I do have quite a few of them. Well, give me a couple. Okay, so one was, the they, they is still my best friends, one of my best, two of my best friends today, mm -hmm. but they came in with a white German Shepherd. Oh, beautiful. Um, Oh, gorgeous dog. Yeah. Um, they had rescued mm -hmm. um, and was dog and people aggressive. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take a people aggressive dog over a dog aggressive dog any day. It's much easier, okay. much easier to extinguish. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where their family couldn't come into their house. Mm -hmm. Actually, the two almost the same. I had a pit bull with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Family couldn't come into their house. Right. It took me probably 20 minutes to get in the front door of each of these houses. Mm -hmm. um, Wow. With the, the German Shepherd, they say, I threw them out of class. No, I didn't throw them out of class. We just did something else other than bring them into class. Um, and the Pitbull, we worked on private lessons. Both of them can now have anybody come in their house. Wow. Mm -hmm. And with no problem at all. Mm -hmm. It's just, and that's, that I saved dogs' lives. Mm -hmm. And it's just... I can't tell you the feeling. You're like you're like the dog whisperer. <laughs> no, they call me the dog lady. <laughs> the dog, well, I kind of, but I like the way that sounds because I love horses and I like the horse yeah, but it's riding. Yeah, taken. That's taken. Okay. <laughs> so they took a hey dog lady. <laughs> well, hey, I'm the fitness king. We'll call you the dog queen. Okay? All right. There you go. Give me a little title. I like it. I'm gonna, can I use it? Yes, I think so. Folks at home, can I let her use that? The dog queen. Okay. Hey, you can use it. Okay. <laughs> in in closing, is there any thing that you want to just share, just to close it off, uh, I'll just give words of encouragement for people that maybe they're struggling with their dogs, and like I said again, maybe they can't come in right now, but if there are just one one or two things that you want to just say, just encourage them to kind of like don't give up hope on their well, dogs. Yeah, no, you know? don't give up hope. These are creatures, they want to understand you, they want to be with you, have fun with them, enjoy them, look at the positives, not the negatives. Mm -hmm. Um, once you start to even do those little things, mm -hmm. you will see it turn around so quickly. Right. I like it. Look at the positive, not the negative. What does that sound like? It sounds like the way we do with our with our friends, <laughs> like, with our spouses, right? <laughs> That's why they say dogs are like kids, kind of, you know? They are. Actually, they stop around at a, a maturity level of about four years old. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. 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 Folks at home, I want to thank you for tuning in to Motivation. It's been a pleasure. I've learned so much today from Joanne Nevi, talking about dogs, talking about your dog's behavior. If you're looking to get a hold of her, make sure that you check all the information at the end of this videotape because I'm sure it will bless you and I'm sure it will help you. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Thank I you so much. I appreciate you coming today, definitely. I appreciate I love yes. it. It's great. Folks at home, and all that you do, stay motivated, stay blessed, and that's right. Take care of that dog. Take care of that dog. All right, we'll see you next time on Motivation.